With all the VPN ads you've seen on YouTube and from soccer teams, you'd think it's time to go out and buy one. Wrong! Today, let's cover why most VPNs you've heard of kind of suck, which ones don't, and why you may not even need one. If you've ever wanted to dabble in Monero, the open source and private by design cryptocurrency, you're going to want to hear about Local Monero, our sponsor for this video. Local Monero is a fantastic website built from the ground up to make buying and selling Monero not only private and secure, but easy and very powerful. You can buy Monero quite literally locally in person from people with cash. You can use PayPal, Zelle, bank transfer. You can even pay with other cryptocurrencies. The options are just endless. It's really awesome because we've been recommending local Monero for the longest time because it's a great KYC free method of obtaining Monero, meaning there's no identity verification. So this is unironically our absolute best recommendation we have for people if they're looking to get involved with Monero. Go check them out down in the description. That link will take you right to their site and you can just play around with it yourself to see how nice it is. And from there, you just trade Monero and call it a day. Links are all down below. Almost every VPN sells the same stuff via the encrypted tunnel. Privacy and security, the main focus, bypassing geo restrictions for things like video streaming and making internet faster. The issue is these selling points aren't very strong when we break each of them down. For privacy, they prevent your internet service provider, like your home internet or your cell provider from tracking sites you visit. Even this has an asterisk. The VPN stops your ISP from tracking you, but not from itself. You're trusting your VPN to not abuse its power, which history shows is not foolproof. With that said, this is one of the most valid selling points of VPNs, since almost every ISP is guaranteed to spy on you. So worst case scenario, a bad VPN puts you back where you started, and there's no other method of solving the ISP issue without using inconvenient tools like Tor. Now just to outline, we do love Tor, but we also acknowledge it is an inconvenient tool, especially to run it system-wide, which is how a VPN runs, not just inside your browser. Now they also hide your IP address, so sites are unable to correlate to your activities just with that. For those who don't know, an IP address is essentially a unique address that can be used to identify you across websites on the internet. When you visit Facebook and when you visit Google, you will have the same IP address, assuming you're using the same browser with the same network configuration. A VPN will likewise use the same IP address across both Facebook and Google websites and all other websites, but at least it's not your IP address. This is even better when lots of people use the same VPN server for an extra layer of anonymity. Now, while hiding your IP address is is an improvement, it's unfortunately only one of countless methods used to track you. Facebook Pixel and Google Analytics, if you're not blocking these, are already correlating your every move and exist on a majority of websites. The uniqueness of your browser is incredibly effective at tracking you around the web, all with the absence of an IP address, and we can keep going down the rabbit hole, but the point is, Hiding your IP address is one of the most surface level issues to deal with in regards to website tracking. Third, some VPNs, not all, have extra features like domain block lists to help you target invasive trackers and ads. These are useful, but there are other options that accomplish this, so you don't need a VPN for this alone. On a security front, claims are weaker. Almost all sites nowadays implement HTTPS, which is an effective countermeasure to man-in-the-middle attacks, which is the main security selling point. To put this bluntly, while VPNs aren't useless for privacy and security, their claims are blown out of proportion. Privacy and security is incredibly nuanced, take it from us, we have a four hour course on it, and if it were as simple as just flipping a toggle, we would be all over it. But what about accessing geo-restricted content? Platforms like Netflix restrict their content to specific regions, generally based on an IP address, which VPNs advertise to bypass with servers in different countries. A couple problems. This breaks the terms of service of almost every streaming platform. Netflix has actually warned that it can ban accounts for using VPNs, but they haven't delivered on this yet. The point stands that all accounts you use this feature with are at risk. VPN servers are easy to track down and most are already blocked on streaming platforms. The ones that aren't generally will be forcing the VPN to just push new servers and the cycle just continues. The advertised solution for this is another purchase for a dedicated IP address, which now sacrifices on the privacy perks from earlier since the IP address is only used by you. You may get away with all of this and stream your favorite videos without issues. Many do, but it's not technically allowed and can never actually be guaranteed by the VPN provider. Now, what about those faster, 
internet speeds. At first glance, this just doesn't make sense, which is why I'm giving the <laughs> confused tone. Your internet traffic still goes through your ISP with a VPN, it's just sent on an additional hop through the encrypted tunnel. And encrypting and decrypting traffic also takes time. So naturally, this should all take longer. But there are some exceptions here. ISPs sometimes throttle certain users or certain types of traffic, which sometimes the encrypted tunnel bypasses. Sometimes the VPN is able to give a more efficient path for traffic than an ISP. And sometimes VPNs compress traffic in certain ways that boost speed. While these are all possible, the reality is for most people, their internet will probably be faster without the VPN, as these edge cases are edge cases. We've run worldwide speed tests with VPNs in the past, so we actually have data to prove this. Using faster internet as a selling point is completely disingenuous. It just cannot be guaranteed, and even if it happens, it's unlikely to be more than 5 or 10% faster than your normal speeds. So VPNs kind of suck, especially the ones you've heard of that make these promises we've talked about they can't deliver. Here's what we think VPN websites should look like. We offer a different party from your ISP to trust with your web traffic without needing to rely on slower tools. We prevent your IP address from being used against you on the internet, but just your IP address, nothing else. We offer a small layer of protection on the security front, and if you're lucky, you'll be able to use this for bypassing geo restrictions and getting faster internet. Neither of these are guaranteed. So now that we cleared up what to expect, here are three requirements to help you choose a quality provider. First, honesty. This generally presents itself via marketing, where you'll find misleading claims and the service giving you a false sense of safety. The best VPNs will outline what they can and can't do in the interest of keeping you safe. Second, make sure they have a clean history. Nord, Express, Surfshark, PIA, pretty much all have questionable things about them that should make you raise an eyebrow. Third, transparency. Again, VPNs are a transfer of trust, so here's what to watch for. Their dedication to privacy, if the VPN website and its apps are loaded with trackers, this is a red flag. To check for trackers, go ahead and visit Exodus down in the description and search for the app name. This is only for Android applications, but most iOS applications will use the same trackers as their Android counterparts, or at least it's an indicator. As for websites, if you're using a browser like Brave or any other extension that does tracker blocking, it should just tell you the amount of trackers on a website. Most VPNs that value your privacy will not include invasive trackers anywhere. You should also read their privacy policy and research previous incidents from the company. It's actually really hard to find scandals because VPN companies actively try to downplay and downrank everything regarding previous scandals so that people can't easily find it. This site down in the description does a very good job of clearly outlining the scandals of pretty much every VPN provider out there, which I highly recommend checking out. Look for open source clients, check for audits performed to verify claims like no logs, they should have a public team, and they should have things like anonymous payment methods and other functionality to at least demonstrate their commitment to protecting users and to go above and beyond. Those three basic requirements of honesty, clean history, and transparency, which I hope everyone can get behind, eliminates a huge chunk of the industry. Today, the services we feel best aligned with this criteria are iVPN, Mulvad, Winscribe, and ProtonVPN. If you've never heard of these before, it's because only one of them has an affiliate plan, which we do optionally have in the description, but no pressure. There's a standard link too, we're not here to sell a service. And just to prove that, we have open source VPN tools for you to easily compare data points of services to see exactly why the services I mentioned go above and beyond to protect you. Whether or not you go with the VPN, it's important for you to remember it's only a tiny part of your privacy and security journey, so we recommend you go watch our Become Anonymous guide to teach you exactly what to do in all the other areas of your life for the best safety possible. See you next time on TechLore.